Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to Shred. And this instrument is, this instrument is a work in progress and also nearly completed. Uh, I am at the stage of rubbing down the finish and buffing and sanding and, and regretting, many regrets. Wow. There are so many facets and sharp edges and rubbing down lacquer with facets and sharp edges is a nightmare. Past me sucks. This is how we got there. It's going to look so amazing. You having fun? I'm having fun. So much fun. Ta-da! Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! So the trick here is we are rubbing down what is essentially a wipe on lacquer. You can, if you're quick, wipe this lacquer on with a cloth or a hard wearing piece of tissue and get what is already a very flat finish. I being in the rush that I constantly am, I slathered it on with a brush and I'm now having to pay for my sins by flattening it quite a lot. I'm hoping that I'm flattening, I'm spending less time working on the flattening than I would have by building up far more thinner layers, uh, but that remains to be seen. The trick is to use a little bit of water to lubricate a good sanding block. I'm being gentle. I'm holding the paper tight and going over the edge. I'm not worrying too much about where I am. As you get towards the end, uh, you could work up to the edge like so. I'm starting on the back and the neck at 800 grit. I might actually leave it at 800 grit. I do want a matte finish on the back of the neck. I prefer the look of that. I like the feel of it. So the trick is use the water, take down a small amount of the finish with the wet and dry paper, use some tissue to dry off the water and then let it actually dry so that you can see in light where you have still got the low spots in the lacquer. You do not want to go too far. I mean, I regularly take things too far. And I always regret it, so don't. Don't go too far. I have spoken. And I tend to go from the middle of the instrument to the outside edge. It seems to preserve the edges better. The corners. Of course, this only works when you're sanding a flat. Guitar. When it's carved, you have to go in and you know, be a lot more careful. On the front, because I'm trying to be much, much more gentle, I started with 1200 grit paper and will go from 1200 to 15 to 2000, maybe two and a half thousand. And the higher you go, the more gentle you can be, uh, the, the fewer passes it takes to get rid of the scratches from the preceding uh, grade of uh, wet and dry paper. And then we will move on to polish and buffing. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping this looks okay in the end and that we have a pretty high gloss finish. A pretty, pretty high gloss finish at that. There are several things that we need to cover. One, I am a numpty and a bit foolish, and that's fine. I have not even followed the instructions on my own product. And I am doing, I'm using a method to finish this guitar that I thought would be the best method because, hey, it's the best method because it's something that I know and have done before and it works. But, Actually, 
I may be wrong. And we'll get to that in a second. Anyhow, uh, rubbing down is one of those things. This guitar has many, many facets. Something else that has many, many facets is a diamond. And something that is used on jewelry, this is tenuous, I know, is a jeweler's polishing stick or emery stick. And they are sold in various different uh, uh, grits and grades and qualities. And I have some. And it's very useful. I have several, like this, uh, various grades. These are actually on a relatively flexible thing. These are maybe even sold as uh, uh, for nails, etc. But getting in in these difficult to reach areas, it's working rather well. I mean, it needs a little bit of lubrication and a little bit more concentration than a man holding a camera and trying to talk to, I don't know, 30 or 40,000 people. There we go. Now, anyway, what the, the, the correct way, the stated correct way to apply this lacquer is, as I said just now, many, many small thin coats. I thought I would be smart and circum vent that and just put loads on and then rub it down and be done with it. And it's working and it will work and it would be fine. But I'd forgotten the next stage. Uh, with this particular finish, you wipe it on and 10 minutes later, you buff it off. And that's how you get a very, very good finish. And I've been rubbing down the back of this and I'm not happy with how it looks raw at 800 grit. It will, however, after one or two more applications applied in the correct way, look stunning. I hope. Let's see, shall we? Well, <laughs> I've got a hell of a lot more standing to do first. We'll get there, though. This is not easy. Who thought it would be a good idea to put this many facets on a guitar? And... You can also use it like so. All right. <laughs> Nowhere near. Nowhere near. But we're getting there. I think it's time to uh, move on to something else, don't you? Well, I'm here and it's coming on. It's coming on, but quite frankly, I'm bored, <sighs> with finishing at least. I have got this episode and hopefully one more before this build is done because I really want to get on with my great guitar build off entry. And uh, time, is, time is running away from me. So while I'm currently bored of the finishing, I am going to spend some time working on the frets and fretboard and the nut. I'm going to paint in the uh, shielding paint. I might as well do that quickly now. And then off camera, 
I'm going to put the music on loud and crack on. Now, shielding paint. The stuff is incredible and easy to apply. Now look at this. That is far too close to that wall. And I've only just remembered that I wanted to get in there with a gouge and carve it away to give enough access for the potentiometer. So I'm gonna to have to do that once this is all dried. I need to take notes during a build. That's what I need to do. This is creating one complete Faraday cage. The entire thing is going to be conductive. Seems I was a little bit hasty with the application of the finish. I should have shielded off the fretboard. I was working like I was working with oil and uh, it has actually built up some sections where I'm gonna have to do some tidying up. I'd almost forgotten about those scallops. It's been so long since I started this build. Hmm. So at Crimson, we have a lovely little set of micro scrapers that are perfect for this task when nicely sharpened, of course, which is a very, very easy job. See some of my earlier videos. And then just a chisel, if you need to, hold it flush to the fretboard and be done. What next, I hear you say? We have a not particularly attractive looking fretboard. What's that? Fret rubbers? Oh my gosh. Then you're so pretentious. Uh, okay, fine fret rubber across the grain. You could even use the medium if the scrapes are that bad and you end up with a fretboard that is absolutely perfect. Now all I need to do that is, well, many more times, of course. Onto the frets, you've seen me do this in multiple other builds, and if you haven't watched all of the other builds, then quite frankly, what the hell are you doing? There's been a lockdown, people, come on. Uh, I am going to, I'm going to round over the fret ends, polish them up, make the fret ends perfect. Flat side down on the fretboard, round the end of the fret over, like that. And then the rounded side of the fret end dressing file, goes around. And we round it over, make it nice and comfy, and just tidy up if necessary. This has to be done before you mask everything off, otherwise you, your file won't reach all of the layers and positions of the fret, etc. So, flat side is a very fine part. Rounded over at 90 degrees to the fretboard. And then on the curved side, far, we round it over. Yeah. 
how about doing the fret ends over a scatter? I'm glad you asked. No different, really. Just make sure it feels comfortable and you're okay. Once we're there, take the coarse, then the medium fret rubbers, and we're essentially rounding over and polishing the edge of the fretboard and polishing up the ends of the frets, like so. I am then going to mask off the fretboard. I am then going to touch the top of the frets with some permanent marker, crown the frets, leaving less than a millimeter of uh, marker along the tops of the frets so that you absolutely certainly I missed something. It's because my son's in the background looking at me going, oh, my daddy knows everything. I know nothing. <sighs> Rewind, boom, 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 boom. Mask off the fretboard. Hit the tops of the frets with some permanent marker. I'm then going to level the frets with a leveling beam. It is very important to use, uh, I use the masking tape and super glue trick to hold my paper onto the leveling beam, but make sure that you use some uh, quality compact paper backed sandpaper to do this. If you use that cloth backed stuff, it has bounce in it, it has give, and it will compress over the frets and you will not get a perfect fret job. Once we level the frets. Then we go back with the permanent marker and a traditional triangular crowning file. With the crowning file, I will crown the frets. I quite enjoy this process. It is, it is uh, meditative. We sand off all of the excess uh, marks from the crowning, polish the frets, thus routing them over a little bit, and et voila and a voila, and, and, there, we have it. A fret job. What can I say? Sounds easy to say. I'll catch you in a couple of hours, yeah? I'm thoroughly perplexed. I have no idea where my neck rests are. This will do. Okay. I forgot in my summation at the beginning to talk about checking that the neck was straight. You have to make absolutely certain that the neck is, is perfectly straight. And in this case, I'm going to have to use the base notched straight edge because we've got a multi-scale and uh, it's a fairly long multi-scale. So yeah, essentially the base should Go off the end like that. Looky, looky. And the notch straight edge sits in between the frets and shows me what the neck itself is doing. And yeah, there's a little bit of a concavity in there, a little bit of relief. So that means I need to adjust the truss rod, which a lot of you have been worrying about. Now this should work, obviously, the truss rod access is normally here, so that's not gonna, that's not gonna reach. That does, however. Now, I don't have much of an angle. That's too short to pull, so I need to get a tube, a little bit of copper. Nice. On to the shielding. Let us, uh, <laughs> let's mask this fretboard off. <laughs> that was close. Try not to drop scalpel blades if you have the chance. 
Here's a little tip you might like. For years I used to cut the masking tape up. Now I just fold it in place, like so. Not my idea, but very, very effective. Permanent marker along the top. Onto a leveling beam, 320 grit. Uh, let us support the neck entirely, very gently, without pushing too hard, without putting too much pressure on the neck and bending things. Imagine you are sanding alongside the strings. You want to get to a point where you don't see any permanent marker left on the top of the frets. And at that point, as long as your leveling beam is properly straight, which crimsons are, and you've got uh, good sandpaper that isn't too spongy on there, you should have a perfect, perfectly level fretboard. Absolutely go through and check at that point with a fret rocker. And essentially you put it over three frets, and if it rocks, you've got a low fret or a high fret which shouldn't be the case here. Each side is a different length to fit over the frets as you go up. And our fret rockers actually fit on mandolins and smaller instruments as well. Again with a permanent marker. Triangular crowning file. Okay, so this is a traditional triangular crowning file. The concave ones are diabolical. They really are offensive to me uh, uh, for many reasons. They basically are more difficult to work with and much more likely to damage the instrument, essentially ruin your whole fret level uh, and make you have to go back to the leveling stage. So with a traditional crowning file we've got three edges that are uh, buffed and shiny and smooth and will do as little damage as humanly possible to the fretboard and what we are after here is to create a flat topped flat-sided pyramid. You are not supposed to be rounding things over, you are making it into facets, which works with this guitar. And uh, as long as, once you've got the angle that you're cutting at, keep the file at that angle and you will be well. In all things, not just your fret leveling, everything will be okay. At this stage, there are, uh, there are many, many different ways to do this. We need to remove the scratches left from the crowning file, and the crowning file itself can't be too fine. Otherwise, this job would just take an interminable amount of time. So they're relatively coarse scratches. One of my favorite methods is to take the fret end finishing file that we used before, uh, which is a much, much finer file. And using the curved side of that against the fretboard, I use that to both curve where we had a flat facet and remove a bunch of scratches. From that point on, it's 600 grit sandpaper uh, and a, uh, a fretboard uh, protector and then fret rubbers and you know, polishing in the usual way. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and meditate with this file. I'm not going to sit down, I'm going to stand here and meditate with this file. I'm talking quietly. It's 9.30 p.m. The world is dark. My kids are asleep. I'm in my happy place. Next day, I went and got a couple of uh, fretboard protectors from Crimson because I can't find the ones that I had here. Uh, although I don't think I'm going to use them. The, the act of using the fret finishing file to get rid of the crowning file scratches has meant that I can take some of this 
uh, abrasive pad. It's relatively coarse. And with that wrapped around a fret rubber, it uses the next, it goes, it takes us to the next stage. And uh, because I'm not actually wrapping sandpaper around a credit card, for example, or something like that, I will not sand through the masking tape. And I don't need the, the, the fretboard protectors on this. Uh, it is, it is what it is. So yeah, sanding, let's go. Let's just protect this a little bit. Now I've gone with the frets, I'm gonna go along and over and I'm lifting the rubber up so that we're bouncing and rounding over. Then, that's been destroyed, onto uh, the fret rubbers. Now, you can either use fret rubbers to go all the way through. This is a, an absolutely valid, well, it's what they're designed for, basically. If you're using the coarser ones, you do need to use a fretboard protector. Or, well, my personal favorite method is a bench grinder. Jewelers Rouge a pigtail on a grinder, and a polishing mop. a bit good isn't it this is this is the quickest way to get a perfect perfectly polished fret and uh, and I love it and I urge you to uh, have a go I really do do not let the polishing wheel catch the wrong edge of the guitar because that pulls it out of your hands and it sucks and so does this position to be frank so I'm gonna stop and, and move on uh, before it cools down too much, just wipe away any excess Jewelers Rouge buffing compound, and then you're done. You too can level crown and polish frets. It's a few processes, but utterly, utterly achievable. And honestly, the first thing that uh, a serious guitarist should know how to do. Uh, let's have a close up and, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Obviously I have finishing to do in the next episode. Super shiny. Absolutely worth it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, we're gonna try and get this shiny next time. In fact, if I have my way, the next episode will be the last episode. So I will be making the bridge. I will be finishing the finish. I will be putting the guitar together and we'll be hearing it play. I sincerely hope so. Uh, don't forget there is currently a sale going on at vintagetoolshop.com. Uh, just to say, hey, we're back and the shop's open and uh, life is hopefully getting back to normal. And uh, yeah, click like, subscribe, check out the live streams, consider supporting Patreon, and most importantly, go and make a guitar or two. Uh, great Guitar Build-Off. I'm about to go into the Great Guitar Build-Off. My episodes are going to be launching soon. <sighs> a nebula's delayed. She's under finish.
It takes a while. The neighbor's dog is barking. The chickens. Let's end on chickens. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great time. Goodbye.